Chromosome banding refers to techniques that stain specific regions of chromosomes, creating unique patterns or bands. These bands help identify chromosomal abnormalities, structural changes, and even map genetic information. Techniques used in chromosome banding. There are various chromosome banding techniques. Six of these would be considered. G-banding. G-banding was developed by Maximo Dretz and Marjorie Shaw in 1971. In this method, metaphase chromosomes are treated with trypsin to partially digest proteins, followed by staining with Giemsa dye, a complex mixture of dyes, azure, methylene blue, and eosin. Dark bands represent heterochromatic regions, which are typically AT-rich meaning adenine and thymine dense, while light bands correspond to euchromatic regions, which are GC-rich meaning guanine and cytosine dense. It is mostly used for identifying chromosomal abnormalities and genetic disorders like deletions or translocations. R-banding. This method was first described by Bernard Dutrilo and Jérôme Jean-Louis-Marie Lejeune in 1971. R banding produces the reverse pattern of G banding. Chromosomes are heated in an acidic saline solution before staining, causing GC rich regions to appear dark and AT rich regions to appear light. This technique is particularly useful for identifying deletions at the ends of chromosomes. Q banding, Lorzek and Torbjörn Kasperson pioneered this technique in 1969. Q banding utilizes the fluorescent diquinacrine dihydrochloride which binds preferentially to specific DNA regions. After staining, chromosomes are examined under a fluorescence microscope, producing distinct fluorescent banding patterns. Due to its real-time visualization, Q-banding is particularly useful for detecting chromosomal variations. C-banding. C-banding was developed by Mary Lou Pardew and Joseph Grafton Gall in 1970. C-banding uses alkali or barium hydroxide treatment before staining with Giemsa dye. This method specifically stains constitutive heterochromatin found around centromeres. Constitutive heterochromatin is a permanently condensed and transcriptionally inactive type of chromatin. This technique is useful for studying chromosome pairing during meiosis and identifying structural anomalies in centromeric regions. T-banding. Bernard Dutrilo developed T-banding in 1976. T-banding is performed by heat denaturing chromosomes typically in a phosphate buffer, followed by Giemsa staining. This selectively darkens the telomeric regions while leaving the rest of the chromosome lightly stained. This technique helps investigate aging-related studies and chromosomal stability by highlighting these repetitive DNA sequences. Nor banding, nor banding was developed by Keith Bloom and Alan Goodpasture in 1975. It employs silver nitrate staining to highlight nucleolar organizer regions located on chromosomes. These regions are rich in ribosomal RNA genes and play a critical role in protein synthesis. NOR banding is often used to study chromosomal activity during cell division. In summary, G banding targets adenine and thymine rich regions, producing dark and light bands, and is widely used for karyotyping and detecting chromosomal abnormalities. R banding targets guanine and cytosine rich regions, creating a pattern opposite to G banding, and is useful for identifying deletions near chromosome ends. Q banding focuses on adenine and thymine rich regions, using quinacrine dihydrochloride to produce fluorescent bands under UV light, which helps in real time chromosome analysis. C banding specifically stains constitutive heterochromatin at centromeres, aiding studies on chromosomal stability during cell division. T-banding highlights telomeric regions at chromosome ends, which is crucial for investigating telomere integrity and aging-related studies. Nor banding targets nucleolar organizer regions to highlight ribosomal RNA gene clusters, facilitating studies on chromosomal function during protein synthesis. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more. Drop your questions in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.